Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about platformers and what it means to make one and what goes into making one. But before we get going, remember guys to join the Discord, hang out with me, hang out with the developers, hang out with some friends. And subscribe if you're new around here, of course. But let's get going. So today the topic is platformers. What does it mean to make one? What elements go into them? And how do you shake it up a little bit? So first I want to talk about the definition. The definition of a platformer is a player guiding a character or an avatar to jump between suspended platforms and or over obstacles to traverse their environment. That's the Wikipedia definition so take that for what it's worth. But now, we talked last week about what the minimum deliverable product or minimum viable product is, so what is that for a platformer? All you need is an avatar, a platform, and a destination with a way to get there. That's all you need, nothing fancy, that's just the basics, how do you start it out? Now what are some core elements that you can pick some things to start developing to make it a little bit more different? First and foremost is the platforms, which the first question there is you need to ask yourself, are they static, are they dynamic? And what does that mean? Well, a static platform is one that doesn't move at all. And a dynamic one is one that moves or interacts with the player or the environment in some way, shape, or form. Now, you don't need dynamic platforms to make a good game. I mean, look at Super Mario. Most of those platforms, if not all of them, in the first couple games are static, yet it's a super good game. So, it doesn't need to have fancy algorithms to make a move. But it can, and that's some way you can make your game interesting. This can also be platforms that break when you stand on them, or swing, or have gravity associated with them. Anything like that would be considered a dynamic platform. Now another question is soft versus hard platform. What's a hard platform? A hard platform is one you can't jump up through, and you can't fall down through, and a soft is one that you can go either way through. You can also do hybrid ones, but those are the main two categories that most people tend to use. Now it doesn't really matter which way you tend to go with them, you can use a good mix of soft, hard, and hybrid platforms. It's not really that important. What is important is how you use them and how they interact with the player, or even how you justify them. If it's something in the background, you probably should be able to go both if it's like a little hill, but if it's like something in the foreground, you probably should only be able to go one way or not through either one. That's that's up to you though and that can be a creative point for you. You can create some interesting dynamics there that I didn't even think of. The next big piece in a platformer is the movement. So the thing you have to decide here is it free movement, partial freedom, or I guess no freedom, but that probably won't make for much fun in a platformer. So free movement is they get control of left, right, jumping, not jumping. Partial freedom would be something that is constantly running and they get to control jumping, or even constantly jumping and they get to control running. That would be an interesting way, I don't think I've ever seen that. And that's, that's where you really need to decide what is my game going to feel like, because that can really change the feel of a game quite dramatically. You also need to decide how fast can they run, is there a sprint? mechanic? Is there a crouch mechanic? Anything like that. And any nuances you want to have, like can this character sprint for a while but then he gets exhausted and has to move really slow? Can they double jump? That That's jumping right there. Jumping is a huge part of platforming games. And parkour. Stuff like that. Can you jump off of walls? Can you wall run? Can you hang off of platforms? Can you swing off of platforms? Can you just grab onto the ledge and climb yourself up? Movement items like that can change the feel of your game dramatically, but also have a huge impact on player enjoyment. Next we have a map. Can your player move left to right, or is it like the classic Mario games where once you move too far right the screen kind of locks in and you can't move back left? Is it top down? Is it anything, like you just explore this massive open world 2D or even 3D map? Are there hidden areas? Can you branch off and not go back to a different path? Is it an infinite runner? 
These are all important questions that you need to ask because the map is a super important part of a platformer and basically defines what it is. Not the feel, but it defines the story, it defines how a character sees the game, or what kind of mood is set. Now the next thing you need to come up with is hazards. And again, we have the dynamic versus static hazards here. Are there spikes on the wall? Are there moving spikes on the wall? Are the platforms themselves potentially hazards? Is there lava on the floor and you can't touch it? I mean, that would be pretty classic right there. Are these obstacles hidden or disguised? Do you want to make this a really hard game? Or do you want to make this a little bit easier? Now, just because they're hidden doesn't mean it, it's hard, and just because they're visible doesn't make it easy. But it can affect how the player sees the game. And if there are hidden obstacles, it's more likely to be a rager because people won't see them, obviously, and will get tricked the first time they go through. Are they disguised so that somebody could see them if they're paying attention, but if you're just running through the level, you probably won't see them. And then enemies. You don't need them. Uh, yeah, you absolutely don't need them, but if you want to have them, what are they going to do? Are they just standing there looking around at the player, throwing projectiles? Are they chasing the player? Are they falling from the sky? Can you kill them? Or do you have to avoid them? Is this a stealth platformer game? That would be interesting. These are all questions that need to be answered because a good platformer, one of the top lines, has some form of hazard, has something the player needs to avoid or needs to pursue and eliminate. This gives just that little extra bit of incentive for completing the level because now the character has, or the player, excuse me, has a reason to continue progressing other than just to get to the other side and will help create longevity for the game and replayability because it's fun and they can get better at it but they have an objective to complete that involves them getting to take out a little bit of their frustration on the map now we get to the miscellaneous parts here what are what are the miscellaneous things you can think of i came up with you can have power-ups uh or perks that you can upgrade on your player or just upgrading their basic speed jumping level up system experience system for killing things you can have a reward system for accomplishing achievements. Uh, is there multiplayer? Can you race against friends? Can you co-op with friends? Is there an entire online battle arena where you race to the other side? Who knows? I mean, that would all be really cool. I can't find it on Newgrounds anymore, but there used to be this stick figure racing game that is uh, super popular. There's four people controlling like a stick figure racing to the other side of a map. It was a lot of fun, but it was like eight years ago and I can't find it anymore. All of these questions and categories are things you don't necessarily need to make a good game, but they're questions that you can answer to help create a better game or just a more well-rounded game, even one that draws in players that typically wouldn't be into the platform genre. And I hope this sparks some ideas in your head. I don't have all the answers as far as these go, but I'm just trying to spark the, in the creative muscle in your brain here to get the ball rolling, get you making some platformers. But what are some noteworthy games that you can go look at for inspiration? The first one, it's, it's pretty obvious, Mario. That's the biggest one. That really is the most popular platformer. But another one would probably be The Impossible Game, which is a mobile, well, it's on Xbox now too, but primarily a mobile game. Then there's Ori and the Blind Forest, which is coming out with a sequel soon. So I'll have to wait and see how that is. Uh, 
Another one, it's a little, might be a little controversial, but Mirror's Edge. Now, most people say, no, that's a first person parkour game. Well, yeah, but isn't that really just at the base a platformer? You're finding creative ways to get from point A to point B. You can use just about any surface in that game to your advantage, and a lot of times you need to get from one area to another by tr navigating between platforms. Now, I'm open to being wrong on that one, but that's just my personal opinion on Mirror's Edge being a noteworthy platformer game. So what are my thoughts on the platformer genre overall? Genre? Genre. Let me try and pronounce that right next time. Honestly, I think it's a great platform... platform? I think it's a great place to start as a new developer. They're easy to do, and they allow you to really get the creative juices flowing, so to speak. And there's a lot of areas that you could really branch out into after starting to make your base game. Though, I think you need to be careful because this is a genre that is quick to turn people off if it doesn't immediately grab their attention because there are just so many platform games. And a lot of them do all the same things. So you kind of need to find something that makes it unique or do something better than another already popular game is another way you could go about that. I think it's definitely worth pursuing as a new developer and even as an experienced developer you can do some really creative things and it is by far it is far from exhausted as far as ideas go so I think you could do some really great things here well guys I hope that was inspirational to some extent I hope you guys found it useful and you guys got a lot of information out of this if you did, let me know in the comments below and leave a like just so I know that I should keep doing stuff like this. I plan on doing this for almost all of the genres, at least all the ones that I know a little bit about. So hopefully you guys will stick around, subscribe if you haven't already. But in the meantime, guys, take care of yourself, and I'll see you later.